When you are pregnant or trying to conceive, you have to make a lot of changes to your lifestyle. And one of those changes often comes in the form of changing up your skincare routine. And I find that a lot of people are very nervous to incorporate various skincare ingredients. So I'm gonna talk about what skincare ingredients are okay to use during pregnancy from my perspective as a dermatologist and someone who just had a baby. If you are new here, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. If you feel so inclined, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please keep in mind, this is not personal medical advice. Trying to conceive and being pregnant is a very unique medical journey and you should always defer to your doctors or other healthcare practitioners when deciding what's right for you. This is what I felt was okay for me to use during my pregnancy based on existing data. And speaking of existing data, this is the reason why people are so nervous to give pregnancy skincare advice at all. And it's because we don't have a lot of good data on these ingredients because it's considered unethical to test skincare ingredients specifically on pregnant women and then see how their babies turn out. So a lot of this data that we're using to kind of guide our choices in terms of what skincare things are considered safe or okay to use in pregnancy is theoretical or based on other studies done on non-pregnant people. I think the other thing that makes pregnancy skincare so confusing for the general public is that you may have one dermatologist publicly say, I don't think you should use that ingredient in pregnancy. And you might have another dermatologist say, oh, I think it's fine. And people go, okay, well, who do I listen to? And it can be really hard. It's not that these two dermatologists have access to different studies or different data. They have read the same clinical trials that we all have, but they have just interpreted them slightly differently. So when I'm going through and talking to you about what things I feel safe using, I'm gonna try and give you kind of my reasoning behind it and why I'm not nervous about it or why I would stay away from it. And then you can kind of decide, well, how do I wanna interpret this data for myself? So let's get into skincare ingredients that I felt comfortable using during my pregnancy. Let's start with benzoyl peroxide. This is sort of like the holy grail OG skincare ingredient to fight acne. And that's because it's antimicrobial, it's anti-inflammatory, it reduces oil production, and it helps exfoliate your skin. So it is really an amazing skincare ingredient, and I would not want to have a pregnant patient have to give it up unnecessarily. And you don't have to. Even though benzoyl peroxide has not been tested extensively, specifically on pregnant women, what we do know is that benzoyl peroxide, when used on the skin, is actually converted into a different molecule called benzoic acid. And when benzoic acid gets into the bloodstream, it's not problematic. In fact, benzoic acid is a food additive and we get more benzoic acid into our body from what we eat than through what we do with our skincare. The American Academy of Dermatology has also approved benzoyl peroxide for use during pregnancy. One of my favorite benzoyl peroxide products is the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. This is a great wash that you can use on your face or on your body. Usually when you're using a benzoyl peroxide wash, I do recommend leaving it on for 30 seconds to a minute on your face and more like two to five minutes on your body because a little bit of that prolonged contact time helps it work better. Another benzoyl peroxide product that I really like is the Neutrogena a stubborn AM acne treatment. This is a leave-on benzoyl peroxide product with 2.5% benzoyl peroxide. And some people are like 2.5%, that's like not enough to be effective. But we actually know that even low percentages of benzoyl peroxide are highly effective. And I really found it very convenient to have that as a leave-on product, especially for the body acne that I got during pregnancy. Just remember that benzoyl peroxide can bleach or discolor textiles, so sheets, linens, clothing. So you have to be careful when you're using that product that you don't ruin things that you love in your home. The next ingredient I wanna talk about that seems to have a lot more controversy around it for whether or not it's okay to use in pregnancy is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid. It's able to concentrate inside your pores and break up the bonds between dead skin cells to help exfoliate the pores a little bit. So it's great if you have dilated pores or blackheads or whiteheads that you're trying to get under control. It's a little unusual that there's so much controversy around topical salicylic acid and its use in pregnancy because both the American Academy of Dermatology and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists have both okayed topical salicylic acid use during pregnancy. Salicylic acid is a metabolite of aspirin. Aspirin is also known as acetyl salicylic acid. And I felt very comfortable using salicylic acid during my pregnancy because even oral aspirin is okay to take during pregnancy. So you have to think about how much salicylic acid is getting into your bloodstream when you take a pill form of aspirin versus how much is getting into your bloodstream when you wash your face with a salicylic acid cleanser or use some type of salicylic acid toner. Also the strength of salicylic acid that the average consumer has access to maxes out at 2%, which is a really low percent of salicylic acid, especially when you compare it to the 20 or even 30% salicylic acid chemical peels that dermatologists do in their office to treat things like acne 
acne and hyperpigmentation. So it's just another variable to keep in mind when you're thinking about what's safe to use in pregnancy. It's not always just about the ingredient, but how strong is that ingredient? How much body surface area am I putting it on? Am I putting it on intact skin or broken down skin? Those are all things that are going to affect how much actually gets into the bloodstream and has the potential to cause any type of harm. But when it comes to salicylic acid, I really have no concerns. One of my favorite salicylic acid products, which has been a fave of mine since I was like 10 years old, I wanna say, are the Stridex 2% salicylic acid pads. They come in the red box and they are awesome, especially if you are kind of on the go or you want something to keep in your gym bag to kind of like wipe down when you don't have time to shower right away. And if you're prone to body acne, taking one of those wipes over your chest or shoulders or even your face can be really helpful in controlling whiteheads and blackheads. Let's move on to another controversial skincare product during pregnancy, and that is chemical sunscreens. And when I say chemical sunscreens, I refer to them that way because that's how they are commonly categorized. But really what that means is that these are sunscreens that use organic UV filters, or essentially UV filters that are not zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Chemical or organic UV filters actually work very similarly to inorganic or mineral-based UV filters. They both work by absorbing UV light and converting it to heat. Now, mineral filters like zinc and titanium dioxide, they also reflect a little bit of UV light, but that is not the main way that they function. The concern that comes with chemical sunscreens is that chemical sunscreens have been shown to absorb to some degree into the bloodstream. A few important points to make though. One, this is not all chemical filters. This is just four particular ones that were studied. And two, just because something is in your bloodstream does not necessarily mean that it's harmful. These organic UV filters have never been shown to cause any direct harm to human health. So we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves if we're thinking, oh my gosh, it's in my bloodstream, so it absolutely can't be used during pregnancy. That being said, I would not fault someone for feeling more comfortable using a physical or inorganic based sunscreen during pregnancy. I used chemical sunscreens during my pregnancy. I tend to like how they feel on my skin a lot better. And also I really had to consider how much body surface area was I covering with this sunscreen and really on a regular basis, on a daily basis, I'm putting sunscreen mostly on my face and the back of my hands and that's it. And that is a very small body surface area. So I was not concerned about any meaningful absorption into my bloodstream that could cause harm to my growing baby. And some people might be watching this and going, okay, but like why risk it at all? Why don't you just you know, bite the bullet for nine months and use a physical sunscreen. Well, zinc-based and titanium-based sunscreens are not good for all skin types and chemical sunscreen filters or organic sunscreen filters are oftentimes a lot more cosmetically elegant. And if someone's going to not wear sunscreen at all or wear a chemical sunscreen, I absolutely recommend that they just wear the chemical sunscreen. One of my favorite sunscreens to use during my pregnancy was the Elta MD UV facial sunscreen. This is an SPF 30 sunscreen and it's actually a hybrid. So it had a mineral or inorganic filter, zinc oxide, as well as a chemical or organic filter, octanoxate. It's a very hydrating and moisturizing formula, which I really craved during my pregnancy because my skin was extra dry. So I just really enjoyed putting it on and it went on so well. There was no white cast. It didn't take a lot of effort for me to rub in. So it was kind of like the perfect low maintenance sunscreen for me to use. And I felt very confident using it during my pregnancy, even though it had a chemical filter. Let's move on to some less controversial ingredients, alpha hydroxy acids. Alpha hydroxy acids include things like glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid. These are are all exfoliating acids that are also humectants. So aside from breaking up dead skin cells and helping with brightening the skin and improving things like acne and pigmentation, they can also be great hydrators. I think it's great that alpha hydroxy acids are considered safe for use in pregnancy because they are incredibly versatile. If you have keratosis pilaris or you're prone to razor bumps on your legs, using things like amlactin lotion, which has lactic acid in it, can be really helpful. Also, if you generally just want exfoliation on your body or on your face, using something like glycolic acid or a glycolic acid lotion can be great. Another thing to keep in mind about alpha hydroxy acids is one, they're helpful with pigmentation and it's not uncommon to develop irregular pigmentation during pregnancy. So it can be very helpful for that. Also, a lot of women are looking for something anti-aging to use in their skincare routine when they're pregnant. They've cut out their retinoids because they know that's not really considered safe. And so I often will recommend a lactic acid treatment or a glycolic acid treatment as an alternative for a way to have some type of anti-aging ingredient in your skincare routine during pregnancy or when you're trying to conceive. One of the products I often will recommend 
recommend to my pregnant patients is the Sunday Riley Good Genes formulations. There's one that has lactic acid if your skin's a little more sensitive and one that has glycolic acid if you want something that's a little bit more robust. But I love both of these, not just for pregnant people, but it's a nice thing to use in pregnancy. Aside from acne and anti-aging, another big skin concern for women who are trying to conceive and who are pregnant is fighting irregular pigmentation. So let's talk about some of those ingredients. First up is vitamin C. And now vitamin C is an antioxidant. It does much more than help fight pigment. It also helps with collagen production. It makes your sunscreen more effective. It's just an overall skin booster and I think a really nice thing to incorporate into a skincare routine. Lucky for us, it's considered totally safe for the use in pregnancy. One of the vitamin C products that I used the most frequently during my pregnancy was the SkinCeuticals Floritin CF. So this is a little different than their classic CE Ferulic. It has 10% L-ascorbic acid instead of the normal 15% in the CE Ferulic. But the CE Ferulic is a little more of an oily formula. And for people who are acne prone or blemish Prone, the CE for it can be a little bit problematic. So if you're breaking out during pregnancy and you still want to try using a vitamin C product that's super high quality and has a lot of good data behind it, consider the Floritin CF. Other pigment fighting ingredients that I would consider safe in pregnancy are topical tranexamic acid, kojic acid, and licorice root extract. And people get a little nervous about licorice root extract because you shouldn't take it orally while pregnant, but in topical formulations, it's used in such small concentrations, it's unlikely to have any negative effects whatsoever. The main pigment fighting ingredients that people get a little nervous about using in pregnancy are hydroquinone and alpha arbutin. Hydroquinone is considered a big no-no because it is so well absorbed through your skin. And although it's not been shown to cause harm to a developing fetus, because so much of it is absorbed, people just avoid it out of an abundance of caution. And then alpha arbutin can be broken down in the skin or converted to hydroquinone, which is the reason why we don't recommend alpha arbutin in pregnancy either. A couple of products that fight hyperpigmentation that I really like are the Naturium 5% tranexamic acid. Keep in mind, I am a dermatology advisor for the company and also the SkinCeuticals Discoloration Defense. I think both of these are really nice, lightweight serums that layer well with other skincare products and you can feel confident using them when you're trying to conceive or when you're pregnant. If you have melasma that is getting worse during your pregnancy, I think of these topicals that I recommend as something to use to keep your melasma at bay in addition to vitamin C and sunscreen. But don't worry if your melasma doesn't totally go away during your pregnancy. I wouldn't expect it to because the thing that is driving your melasma is inside of you, that growing baby and all of those hormonal shifts. So don't worry too much about that irregular pigmentation until you are postpartum because it's very hard to fully combat that type of pigmentation while you are actively pregnant. Another ingredient that people are nervous about using while they're pregnant, which I had no idea about until I got a ton of DMs about it during my pregnancy, is the use of aluminum-based deodorant or antiperspirant. It's totally safe. The amount of aluminum that you absorb through the skin is minuscule. There's no good data that it causes breast cancer or affects your fetus in any negative way. So if you are smelly and sweaty, use your aluminum-based deodorant and don't sweat it. I've talked about this many times. I really like the Vanna Cream antiperspirant slash deodorant. The only time I don't recommend this is if you have really sensitive armpit skin because aluminum can be irritating for some people. Another product that's considered safe for use in pregnancy is self-tanner. And a lot of people are worried about using this. I think because you apply it to your entire body, there's something about that that feels like, oh, this is not going to be safe. But the main ingredient that actually makes it an effective tanner for you, the dihydroxyacetone, is interacting with the dead skin cells on the surface of your skin. And the amount that is absorbed systemically is really negligible. So you can feel confident using a self tanner during pregnancy. I would stay away from spray tans just because you don't wanna be inhaling that chemical because that's a much better way to get it into your system than through your skin. But using like a bronzing mousse or something like that, I think is totally reasonable. One of my favorites is the San Tropez Express Bronzing Mousse. And I also have an entire video on some of my favorite self tanners and my technique. A couple of skincare ingredients that are great when you are pregnant or trying to conceive and are really not debated at all are sulfur and azelaic acid. I am personally big fans of these ingredients regardless of pregnancy safety status because they both help with rosacea and they have both helped me on my rosacea journey. Azelaic acid is antimicrobial, it's anti-inflammatory, so it can help with redness. It also is a pigment fighter. So to me, it's just like a jack of all trades. If you are pregnant and you come to a visit in my office and you have acne and you want to treat it, you almost certainly are leaving with a prescription for azelaic acid. Now, if you don't have access to healthcare, or you're not able to get a prescription for azelaic acid, there are a couple of over-the-counter products that I also recommend. Naturium makes a really lovely 10% azelaic acid emulsion that I'm a big fan of. And Glytone makes this enhanced brightening complex that has both azelaic acid and glycolic acid. And it is just, it's fabulous. It's probably the first azelaic acid product that I ever like fell in love with. And then we have sulfur, which is a pretty unglamorous skincare ingredient, but it can be highly effective for the treatment of both acne and rosacea because it's antimicrobial. And 
it helps with oil control. I feel like it's a bit of a shame that there aren't better sulfur products out there, but there is one by Joseph. It's an anti-acne soap that has 10% precipitated sulfur. And that's something that I do recommend to my rosacea and acne patients, particularly if they're trying to conceive or are pregnant. So those are the skincare ingredients that I felt comfortable using during my pregnancy. Just to be a bit more comprehensive, I did want to mention a few skincare ingredients that should definitely be avoided during pregnancy. So the first thing we're avoiding is retinoids. This includes things like retinol, which you can get at a drugstore or through a beauty supply store, as well as prescription strength retinoids like adapalene and tretinoin and tazeratine. We avoid these when trying to conceive and when pregnant, not because topical retinoids have been shown to cause birth defects, but because oral retinoids have been shown to cause birth defects. And by association, we just don't want to take the risk. Now, if you're one month pregnant and you found out late and you had been using your topical retinol, I would not worry about it. That is really common. And we even have good data to show that women who were accidentally using their topical retinoid and became pregnant didn't have any issues with their babies. But in general, if you're trying to conceive or you're pregnant, get the retinoids out of the bathroom. The next ingredient is one that I touched on a little earlier in this video, which is hydroquinone. It's our strongest gold standard pigment fighter, but it is so well absorbed through the skin that we avoid it in pregnancy. The last ingredient that I have people avoid when they're pregnant or trying to conceive is minoxidil, which is a topical medication that we use to help regrow hair. Most commonly it is known as Rogaine. Because this ingredient has been linked to birth defects in the past, we just avoid it. All right, that is a wrap. What are or were your favorite products to use during your pregnancy? Pregnancy. Put it in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.